Hello and welcome to Season 7, Episode 12 of the Ubuntu Podcast. In this episode, we are going to be talking about uh, alternatives to Ubuntu 1, and we're going to have a command line love, and we will go over your feedback. Ooh. Joining me this week are the usual suspects, Tony. Good evening. Laura. Hello. And Alan. Hello. Tony, what have you been up to? Um, I've been trying the new version of the software I use for photo processing. It's called Aftershot. Uh huh. It used to be called Bibble, and then it got bought by Coral, who make PaintShop Pro, um, and they called it Aftershot. And they've released a new version for the first Ooh. time in about 18 months. <laughs> and um, I've been trying to see the differences between that and the uh, old version. There's not much in it, to be honest. Um, but it is, <laughs> it, is, it is one of the few kind of, let's say, professional um grade pieces of photo software that's available on linux windows and mac os so it's kind of you've nice. been using that for a while now haven't you? yeah i've been using it for well, i guess three years since i started you know getting into photography professionally really mm-hmm. um and uh it is still very good um but it's not quite the change that i was used to but i want to support them because they do keep making it for linux and mm. hopefully will continue to do so and this will cue lots of people writing in and say use open source software piece of a uh, piece of software called x or whatever it is so I, yeah, so I'm feel free to do that, to... Tony at the UK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cheers, mate. Thanks. <laughs> wow. O seven three. Alan, what Hello. have you been up to? <laughs> uh, <laughs> avoiding Tony from is what I'll be doing this week. Uh, so uh, last week, uh, last episode, I mentioned um, the Ubuntu Mate Remix. So uh, in a bit of my spare time, I've been learning how to. Uh, create live CDs, like remixes of Ubuntu, oh, which is quite it, interesting. Is it uh, easy? A mummy CD and a daddy CD, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. Uh, no, it, well, it's not really that straightforward, and it's not, <laughs> and it's not actually that well documented either. It's, uh, it's, which has been quite painful. I've had oh. to. There's, there's two ways you can do it. You can basically unpack a live CD, yeah, and fiddle around with it, or or create a cheroot and put loads of stuff in it that you want, and then unpack a live CD and put all the bits together, and like it's a bit like a Frankenstein cut and shut CD, <laughs> which works, yeah, um, just. Or you can use the tools that are provided that that are used to build the Ubuntu CDs, the official Ubuntu yeah. CDs, using seeds and a tool called Germinate and and. and uh, tool called live build right. but all of that is really badly documented oh, is it the people who know how to do it do it all the time yeah i found a, <laughs> i found a document with various comments from the people who who use well no it's it's one of those things that's been set up and runs for like, it's been oh, running right. for like 10 years building the isos yeah so nobody ever touches it and there's no reason <laughs> to document it because it's all done and it works so yeah it's a bit frustrating cool mm-hmm. <laughs> laura what have you been doing got a new phone you got an Ubuntu Ooh. phone was that no. <laughs> Not exactly, oh. but apparently it will be supported. <laughs> Alan said. Alan when you said. Asked him, I did not. <laughs> What'd you get? Uh, Sony Xperia Z1 Compact. A white one. Ooh. A white one. Yeah. yeah. It's nice. Oh, yeah. Mm, it's very nice. Yeah. Got very good reviews. I was surprised when you hit the photo button, it doesn't open the photo app. It does. It You're didn't. Doing it wrong you go press and hold it. Oh, okay. Because that way you don't do it in your pocket, I suppose. Uh, yeah, yeah, I take photos in my pocket. I do it all the time. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Cool. cool. Mm. Is it good? Running latest Android and all that? Seems is, to be. Is it clean, I haven't really clean used Android? It yet. Or is it using, has it got some front endy skinny thing? It didn't look like it did. It's got Sony stuff on it, but not as the skin in the same way that HTC does it. Right. It's a bit less obvious. Um, the, well, the main thing is that it shows up lots of stuff about the Sony Unlimited music. Oh, right. Like a music store type thing. Right. And I know in the uh, review I read, they said they complained about how it was in your face and stuff, but it seems okay to turn it off. Well, the, uh, see, this is the problem with Android. If you if if Sony don't do that, how are they going to yeah, differentiate no. themselves? And if if you if you don't pay for the Sony one, what are you going to do? You're going to pay for the Google one. So all the revenue mm. is going to go straight to Google. <laughs> uh, but it's quite cool because they, they, well, they've done their own apps, which... Or, all right, I've not really tried them yet, uh, but the music one's called Walkman. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> is it a little picture of a cassette or anything? No, I haven't looked yet. Oh, that yeah. would be cool. That'd be cool. Does it play the music at the wrong speed? <laughs> <laughs> My Walkman always used to do that. Not sure. What about you, Mark? Uh, I went to Bar Camp Birmingham, which is. Oh, I saw you tweet about that. Yes. It's, was uh, it good? Yeah, it was really good, actually. It was organised by um, Floss UK, who are formerly the UK Unix user group. 
Um, and yeah, uh, it was probably about mm, 30, 20, 30 people there. Um, I did a couple of talks. Uh, on what? I did one on Og Camp. Yay! Uh, and I did one on... Uh, I did a talk at Og Camp a few years ago about running your own sort of cloud services at home. So I did a sort of updated version of that with what I'm using today, which actually ties in nicely with our segment, which we're going to do. Cool. Um, and uh, I also sort of chipped in a bit. Pete Cannon was there and did a, a, a talk about podcasting. So I, I chipped into his talk a bit. Has he got a podcast? <laughs> Sorry, I say that every time. Yeah. He just opens his front door and right. shouts. <laughs> <laughs> Some fool walked up with a microphone. And... Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. The rest is history. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Shall we get on with the show? Yes. So recently we announced that uh, Ubuntu One file sharing service was being shut down uh, for various reasons. And uh, we asked Mark Shuttleworth about that when we interviewed him a few weeks ago. Um, And uh, he said, you know, paraphrasing slightly that other people did it better. Um, And uh, I wanted to, given, given it's now got to the time when you need to start getting your files out of Ubuntu One, uh, where would you put them? What would you do? You know, what what alternative do you use now? Ubuntu One has gone away, and I figured there's probably a bunch of options. And I know you guys all use different options, and I've got something different. But I figured there's some criteria that that probably most people are going to be um, thinking about when they're looking at an alternative to Ubuntu One. And I've called this the Cresco scale. It, oh, this isn't this is something you made up. Is <clears throat> yeah, it? yeah, it's, to- it's totally official. I'm going to make a Wikipedia page about it and everything. Right. Uh, so Cresco stands for uh, cross-platform availability. You know, if you're not just using Linux or you've got an Android phone or something, yeah, that might be important. Uh, reliability, however else is it? Uh, ease of use. Uh, how secure is it? Uh, do you have control of your own data? Uh, what's it cost and how much do you get for that cost? And how open is it? Right. <coughs> so... What do you want to uh, to? I mean, you've got a few. I, I noticed you've you've noted down a few suggestions of of solutions. Yeah, I mean, I know what I've got, but what do you, what do you guys use, Tony? Um, I moved to Dropbox, and what triggered that? Um, what triggered you choosing Dropbox over any of the others? Did you look at any others, or did you just go Dropbox? I had a Dropbox account already, so I just <laughs> looked at that. Mostly. So that was easy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it compared it with itself. Was it? Yeah. Were you already paying for it at that point? Um, no, I, I still haven't. Oh, you're you still to, sorry. Still using the free the free account. Right. So um, yeah, so I just thought Dropbox is there. I've got an account, and um, let's see if it does what I need it to do. So I uh, I tried it, and it seems to work okay. And um, I've moved all my stuff from Ubuntu One into Dropbox, and happy days. Is what? it easy to use? Yeah, it does. Yes, pretty much. It works exactly the same as Ubuntu One. <laughs> <laughs> Same sort of right click menu, you know, choose to share that sort of thing. Cool. Move to Dropbox. So you put your like wedding photos and stuff in there that you share with customers. Yeah. So if if a client has a digital download, oh, do you do wedding photos, photography? <laughs> yes, I do. Thank you very much, Mark. <laughs> um, so if a client has a digital download um, for their sort of pre wedding photos, or they just want the digital copies or whatever, put a zip file into Dropbox and share the link to them, and then they can send it on to anybody else and get the photos. Right. So yeah, works really well for me, and I'm very happy with it, and it's free, and so far I haven't crossed the threshold for uh, amount of storage where I didn't need to start paying, which I did do with Ubuntu One. I had paid for a, a storage expansion. Oh, right. How much mm. space are you using on Dropbox, then? Uh, less than 10 gig. Oh, okay. Do you change, like, you'll upload something, and then after a while you'll delete it so that you never, it's not like you're accumulating stuff in it? Yeah, eventually I'll clear some stuff off if I needed to, I guess, but so far I haven't had to. So, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and it's quick and it's efficient and the little icons there and there's the web front end and it all seems to work quite well. The only thing that I don't quite like is the fact that shared folders, so somebody shares a folder with you, kind of counts towards your storage as well. Yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> that's the only thing I don't like about it, but I'm managing to keep that under control as well. Cool. What about you, Laura? I use Dropbox and I pay for it. Ah. Um I use Dropbox for free for a bit and then when I started my PhD three years ago something like three and a half years ago um i wanted something that was essentially version control 
mm-hmm. um, so that I could find things when I've made a mess. Rather, rather than actually using version control. Yeah, well, I, I went on Twitter and said, who recommends something? You know, I want this. And um, so I had people recommend Git, uh-huh. which was nice of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, which three years later you're now learning. Which three years later I'm now learning so I can use GitHub. Um but yeah, I mean, I, I'm glad I didn't go down that route. I've, I've used SVN a lot in the past and stuff, but it's just, <laughs> I just want to, I just, I just want to be able to drop stuff into a folder. So is it is the the version controller feature of the paid version of Dropbox, or did you need the extra space? Uh, no, you the version control. Well, you get a month's uh, version control uh, version in right, history right, okay. anyway for free. Yeah, um, but if you want more than that. Uh, you have to buy the Pack Rat uh, oh, add-on. Really? Um, pack Rat add-on is fairly cheap, yeah. but in order to have the Pack Rat, you need, you need Pro version. Well, oh, no, it's oh, not no. so much the space. Oh, I see. Well, you have to. You just have to have first. the Pro version. And how much is that? Um, all in all, I think it's about seventy-eight quid a year. Is that for more? Does that give you more space and? Yeah, pack you rat? get a hundred for being Pro. You get a hundred gig. Wow, okay. And lot. then, and so I put all my photos, my photo, photos, yeah. and everything it was like yeah. thirty gig of photos. Right. Um, yeah, and then you and the pack rat thing. But I, to be fair, I've never actually <laughs> gone beyond like a week or two. So in on balance, maybe don't need it. But um, yeah, the space is useful now. Yeah, but that's something you would never have had with Ubuntu One, the versioning, because it no. never it never had versioning. <laughs> The reason I didn't go with Ubuntu One at that point was because they didn't have a decent web interface for being able to access stuff when I didn't have um, when I didn't have the actual installation. Right. Um, it had it quite soon after, I think, because remember we discussed it on the podcast. Yeah. But at the time that you couldn't, and I think it you went couldn't away download. Again, no, it didn't. It? didn't. No, the file the file access was always there. Oh, yeah. okay. Maybe I think there were other else. tomboy went away. Oh, that's it. Tomboy went away. Yes. Yeah. Uh, right. Yes. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I still use it. Partly, partly it's kind of just because it works. Why would I change kind of thing? And I've sort of, you pay, I pay once a year. So right. yeah. any time in the year where I think about it, I go, oh, I'll forget about it till November <laughs> or whatever. Come November, it goes, oh, yeah, we've just taken £80 out of your account. All oh, right, well, I may as well stick you for the year. <laughs> <laughs> Coming. Do, do either of you worry about the um, the fact that your data is now with someone else on Dropbox servers and not encrypted? Not really for the sort of things that I'm putting in it. Um, because it's all just photos? Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, well, I mean, if I put some documents and things in there as well, but... They're, they're not your private photos, they're other people's private photos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are stuff that's that's mostly there for distribution anyway, yeah. so it's not like it's um, yeah. massively secure design documents or you know intellectual yeah. property or anything else could you I... not achieve the same thing by like scp'ing the files up to a web host and giving them a link to a folder yep could do that too yes and what is it just easier with dropbox it's just so easy right okay so mm. ease of use trumps the fact that you you no longer have control over those files yeah and i haven't got to pay for web hosting and stuff which i, I do have right. already obviously but you know, i haven't got to maintain that too um Right. Yeah, it is it is just really easy. Yeah. It's ease of use for me mainly as well. Right. Hmm. Well, what about you then? Mark. Hello. <laughs> uh, I have made my way through various solutions over the years. <laughs> Here we Come, go. tell us this about is, them. This is the alternative <laughs> version. So, <laughs> yeah, so I when Dropbox first came out, it was basically the only thing that did it. So I used Dropbox for a bit and found it very easy and convenient. Um, I then started trying to move away from having stuff stored on servers, which I don't control essentially mm. um so i moved to own cloud um which um I've spoken and you had that running on a box at home yeah and i still have it running on a box at home right um i've spoken about this quite a lot on the show before so i won't go into massive detail <laughs> you can probably search the archives and hear diatribes for me about own cloud um but basically i mean it it provides you with a web interface to your files and a web dav mountable volume and um they also have a sync client, which works quite well up to a point. The trouble is I sync my whole music collection so that I can have it on my server and on my desktop and on my laptop if I want to listen to music, for example. Um, and when you start doing, you know, gigabytes worth of files with the own cloud sync thing, it tends to fall over. Um, so I then moved to BitTorrent Sync, which, again, we've spoken about before on the show, right? which is a decentralized version. So it doesn't 
rely on having a central server to sync things between like own cloud does uh, it's peer to peer um which is good but it's also proprietary and um the developers aren't terribly responsive to questions um no no i've i've discovered this myself as well because yes. I, I mean I, i've written a, a um application indicator for it and i had some questions about the licensing and their um, terms of their api um and basically the terms made it seem like they weren't happy with anybody writing open source applications using their API and they wouldn't give me a straight answer as to whether it was okay or not. Right. Which makes me sort of not want to carry on doing it. So you've me- meandered through Dropbox, uh, own cloud, BT sync. <laughs> Any others? Uh, I'm now migrating from BT sync to sync thing. Right. And so it, it, the thing that turned you off from BT sync was just the fact that they don't seem responsive and you can't maintain your own software that hooks into theirs. Um, is, that, is that the main thing? That's, I mean, oh, it's also the sort of, you know, slightly weird magic way it appears to work and it's not particularly well defined anywhere. And, you know, they say, you know, yes, we've it, it's secure and it, it's encrypted and it only syncs between your devices, but it could also be syncing with their central server, which has some the NSA, crafty or master key on it and they're, right. you know, getting all my files. Yes. I, 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 to be honest, from you, know, people have people on their forums have sat with Wireshark and watched the traffic and how much it's sending and when it's sending it, and it seems pretty safe that it is actually only doing what they say. But if I have an open alternative, which with Sync thing I do, then I'm happier using that. Right. So uh, of all the ones I've noticed, all the ones you've chosen are all free of cost. Yes, that's the other thing. I have a lot of. I've got a. a big raid array on my server at home and i now have a fairly decent internet connection so i don't really feel the need to pay someone else for a load of storage just because it happens to also be on the internet right so for you cost is a factor yes uh control of your data is a factor yes security is a factor openness is a factor yes given it's at home reliability is less of a factor for you it seems um well I've, i've had one hard drive fail and i replaced it and everything kept going Right. So, you know, yes, it's something that I have to pay attention to or worry about rather than leaving someone else to pay attention to or worry about. So you've moved to Think Thing. Yes. What what does that does that do the same things that Ubuntu One Dropbox and Cloud VT Sync does? More or less. It's at the moment it's a bit clunkier. It's slightly less easy to use. The thing like um So from a UI point of from, view. It's from missing. a UI yeah. Um, and just a general setup point of view, because uh-huh. for example, with um, uh, own cloud and BT sync, when you wanted to add another folder, you basically had a, a key which you like. Well, no, sorry, with own cloud, you pointed it at the server and said sync that file folder, um, and it synced. And with um, BitTorrent sync, you had a secret which was a very long string which you pasted in, and then it found the folder on whichever other nodes had that. Whereas with sync thing you have to type in this enormous key to add um, another device on your network and then you have to type in the id of the shared folder which is the same on all of the other nodes and then it starts to sync and then you have to do it on the other end as well yeah otherwise it doesn't see it right which isn't but once you've done that it just seems to work and it seems you know fairly stable so what would i mean obviously the recommendation from tony and laura seems to be you know dropbox ease of use yes which one would you choose then? How do you mean? Sorry. Well, for recommending for, for recommending it for someone else. Um, it depends whether you care more about ease of use or security. Basically, I reckon. What would you pick for ease of use? Having tried all different ones. I well, hmm. Okay, yeah, I'd say Dropbox is easiest to use in terms of having basically no setup whatsoever. You sign up for an account and you have a folder which you put stuff in. So yes, for ease of use, Dropbox definitely wins. As well, you as you say, Ubuntu One pretty much had the same thing mm, when yeah. it was alive. Um, yes. Has anybody tried the box? Because that's another, I have not. That's quite similar, I think, to Dropbox. But I've no yeah, idea there's a few it. of these. There's the box copy. Um, Microsoft have got their own one, and then there's Google Drive. Drive, yes, yeah, trying where, to be that. Yeah. You know, you could you can stick loads of files in your Google Drive, although there isn't a native client on Linux. I do use that for collaborative document editing. Right, yeah, I, I use that too for, for documents. I was but thinking I more put, general... Yeah, like, I don't put any personal stuff in Uploads there. and things. But yeah, right. I don't use it for yeah uploading just general files. Right, okay. 
So I, I went through a similar thing as you guys. I, I, but I've had Dropbox for years, and I've you ma- told us about it. Did I? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! So yeah, and I've managed to accumulate a lot of free space by referring loads of other people. So yeah, Tony, you should refer your customers to use Dropbox, and then you get loads of free space. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Uh, Tell them to click this link first, sign up for Dropbox, and then I'll share this folder with you, and then you get free space. I think awesome. I've I've got about twenty twenty five gig in referral. And right, not just referrals, but um, I took part in the university oh, yes. space race <laughs> and i got lots for that yeah if you wow. have an academic account you can get quite a lot of free space okay i thought yeah. i had a lot i've got 15.8 gig of <laughs> dropbox but yeah that's pretty good so I, yeah i went through dropbox and i then moved everything into ubuntu one when i started you know getting confident that ubuntu one was pretty good <laughs> and uh, yeah not early on um but I did have a couple of significant problems with Ubuntu One in that it was very slow to sync and it was quite unreliable and the client failed for me a number of times in a way that Dropbox just didn't. Mm. You know, I found Dropbox really reliable where Ubuntu One just wasn't. So most most of my stuff is still in Dropbox, but I, I'm feeling really uneasy about having stuff in Dropbox and, and having it all on their servers because it's not all encrypted they do deduplication uh data storage so they you know they if i put a pdf in there and you put a pdf in yours if it's the same pdf only one copy is stored on their servers so it's clearly not encrypted i'm kind of curious about an easy way of encrypting files so what i do i i have i have a, a few files in my um dropbox uh which which is encrypted um and uh it's it's uh, it's actually not that hard if you if you don't mind using gpg uh, <laughs> so right. uh, i use used it and I, I well so there is a, there is a gui to set up gpg keys right mm-hmm. and you basically mash the keys and type in a password and yeah you know, it's really straightforward there's a thing called seahorse on ubuntu mm-hmm. right once you've got that key you can then encrypt a file and this is where it gets a little bit nerdy. Yeah, it's really, really easy. I use Vim uh, with with a GPG plugin. And so every time I open these GPG encrypted files, the Vim GPG plugin decrypts the file for me. Right. And I can then edit it. So that's fine for text files. And as soon as I save it, it gets re-encrypted back to disk automatically. So I don't have to do anything. Um, so that's really nice, but it's only for plain text files or whatever you can edit in Vim. I'd kind of like something where it does it within the file manager yes. and is cross platform. <laughs> and because I've got, it's not the same thing, but I've got a password manager key pass. And right. it's yeah. brilliant that it runs on Android, Linux, and uh, Windows. Right. And I can just download the file from Dropbox and I don't so, know Dropbox. So what you're, <laughs> what you're really wanting is a, like a container inside which you can put loads of stuff and you know it's encrypted yeah. and you can share it across all the machines yeah. and you can open it on all the machines, which is basically what TrueCrypt was. Yeah. <laughs> um, and TrueCrypt Next should continue to be. So keep an eye on TrueCrypt Next. But I've, I've also switched to um, SyncThing and I've been using SyncThing um, for syncing files between my laptop, my desktop and my home server. And just my own files on my own machines. But more recently, while I was working with Martin Wimpress on the Ubuntu Mate Remix, he's put sync thing on his server, and we've shared a folder that's got the ISO images in and another folder that's got the documentation and our notes in. We shared these keys via this horrible mechanism that Mark was talking about that's not very straightforward. But now we both have a folder that I can drop stuff in, he can edit it, it's, okay. and it just synchronizes between us. But it's there's no the the big benefit for me is there's no limit on space. The only limit on space is how much space I've got on my machine, and essentially how much Martin has on his machine. Because if yeah. I've got terabytes and I drop loads of files in there, it's going to sync across to him. I don't know if there's any limits he can place to prevent me doing that. But um, yeah. yeah, I've I've found yeah pretty much the same as you. Dropbox for ease of use, sync thing for um, uh, control of my own data. Cool. Well, if you have any other alternatives, and um, you can email us at podcast dot ubuntu no podcast at ubuntu dash uk dot org, and you can tell us about how they rate on the Crescos. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
time now for command line love and this one is based around the df command which shows you the size of uh, file systems and how much space has got left on it right read it out read it out no it's really complicated <laughs> and horrible to what read does out it do? so it um orders your file systems by uh, by the percentage that they've been used um so the command the uh, content of df is just sort of fairly random i think i don't know quite how it's ordered right uh, normally but it sorts that um based on the amount of uh, percentage of your file space that's been used so you can see each of your different disks or other devices you've connected or plugged into it like usb sticks um and how much space there is left on them. You can also, uh, with a different different option, um, sort by file system size. So it just makes it a little bit more intuitive, maybe yeah. about where to look in that list. Seems uh, like seems like the kind of feature which should be built into DF, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the fact that there's something being constructed which is so horribly complex and uh, circuitous in order to get there is a little bit. Um, disappointing in a way well you know part of this gigantic command is just making well quite a big chunk of it is just making sure that the header is at the top <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> which you know seems a bit weird it would be nice if you know you didn't have to worry about that but true yeah, yeah. okay if you cut that bit out i guess it would be a lot more simple but um yeah that's all fine isn't it yeah no yeah. no it's good i tried it myself and uh yeah it works it's nice yeah excellent cool it's good well that'll save you valuable seconds well yeah Apart from the time you spent looking for that command, presumably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that too. Okay, and that's the command line love for this time. And now it's time for your feedback. Uh, so first up, we've got an email from Simon Josie who sent us quite a long email, um, but basically telling us it continues to get better and better. And that's because he feels he knows our characters quite well. And perhaps it's just because we all seem so comfortable in each other's company, even when one of us has our grumpy trousers on. Alan. What? <laughs> uh, he even likes the musical stings, Tony. Good, good. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> Which he didn't when he first subscribed. So we've just grounding down i think <laughs> um and he likes the the format and uh yeah it's brilliant basically basically um, we're awesome we're awesome the turning point for him was the episode from a couple of seasons back where you all spoke about why you got interested in on so slash ubuntu do you remember that no nope. <laughs> <laughs> i felt that the episode went in a subtly different direction with you all revealing more about yourselves than i'd heard before oh, ah, that's, that's probably nice. not a good thing yeah. <laughs> anyway he says keep up the good work oh, oh thank you it was Simon. quite a nice email yes. yeah very nice thank you we love getting those emails yeah yeah but he didn't just say yeah you're great yeah. <laughs> he told us why exactly uh, and we had a tweet from alan cox this is not the kernel hacker this is the other alan cox hmm Yes. Um, and he tweeted uh, to Popey and us, is there much needed, uh, sorry, is the much needed Ubuntu phone to initially include convergence with desktop functionality? I really do hope so. Well, we had a session about this today on <laughs> the Ubuntu Online Summit. And the answer is uh, no, initially the first phones uh, and the first phone images don't have the converged desktop because that's not ready yet. Right. So... The plan is for there to be an image that you can download that has Unity 8 and Mir and has all of the nice uh, new converged version of Unity on it. Um, but that's not all finished yet. So right, once so that's finished... Right, so it won't be on the phones. That'll just be there for you to play with. Uh, yeah, but that's on a desktop, not on the phone. Oh, I see. Okay, right. Um, so <laughs> later... You, what if you plug a really small screen into your desktop? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then try and shove it in your pocket. If you... If you if, if, <laughs> If you feel like you want to simulate the experience of having a gigantic desktop in your pocket, try it. Uh, but no, that'll be later on. Okay. Oom um, on the blog says, thanks for the hint about Linux formats, Linux intro, no, Linux foundations, <laughs> Linux intro course at edX. I would welcome more such announcements in future shows, albeit maybe a bit close to a course's actual start date, smiley face. I mean, it's news now, but in my humble opinion, the relevance to many listeners cannot be at its peak now. So, yeah, it doesn't start until August, does it? Yeah, so you know, you want to get... sign up now. Yeah, you want to sign up, get yourself ready, get your pencil sharpened and uh, get your notepads out. Coloured pens. Mm. <laughs> get your lucky Scented gonk. Uh... Yeah. So uh, there's a couple to read out now. So Dan Wynan donated to my Malawi mission. Um, You're going to Malawi? <laughs> really? 
Well, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but when? He, <laughs> but he specifically wanted a shout out um, for having done so because he donated fourteen oh four. <laughs> um, 14 pounds oh, nice. and four Aww. pence so the latest uh, i didn't get a shout out the latest edition of ubuntu you donated anonymously um the oh yeah when i was 25 pounds away from the limit you donated 24 pounds 99p <laughs> <laughs> yes yes i did <laughs> i now realize this was you <laughs> i did have a, i did have a suspicion but yeah and then dave wickham from um, the open source community, actually just tipped me over the uh, over the target amount. So and donated, doopy. yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. So um, everybody has been really kind and generous, and lots of other people who I know as well have been really uh, generous and supported the whole thing. So it's amazing, really. We're talking mm. about it for nearly a year. Mm. Now you got actually got to do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. we're finally so, getting rid of you. So yes, yeah, so, yeah, so thank you very much indeed. Um, finally, get rid of me. Oi, <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> So um, the last thing we've got is an email from Dr. Jellyface. Uh, <laughs> That's what he uh, said. Um, he's writing because he can't resist the please do contact us sting for the fourth or fifth time. Wow, um, someone likes it. Yeah. Um, and it works, apparently. Um, so he just wants to say we're awesome again. <laughs> you know, oh, what can we kind. do? Um, and we're wonderful. Um, it's not that we have loads and loads of email and most of it says we suck and we don't read that out. We do actually get <laughs> quite a few nice ones. Yeah. Um, so he's quite a new Linuxer for about three months, re- running Ubuntu, what else, with Lubuntu desktop installed because his computer's not powerful enough for Unity. Um, he says, please, can you make the podcast a bit louder? <laughs> Volume. <laughs> <laughs> I've set the volume to max and I still don't hear everything, especially if someone speaks from the back and or a lorry passes. I suggest a new car because we find that cars are quite noisy. Yeah, um, it's tricky. It is tricky to get the levels right. A yeah. jag or something probably Maybe usually cuts put, out the noise. Put your ear trumpet back in. And, uh, <laughs> although not while you're driving. <laughs> Yeah. We're, we're very nice to people who, who write feedback, in, aren't we? Yeah. No, spe- Thank you for the spe- feedback. We highly appreciate it. Speech is difficult in cars. Mm. Yes. Uh, gaming with Tony should be longer. Yeah. Really, really shouldn't be. I, yeah. I, I completely agree. Yes, it should be. It almost should be spun off into a separate show. <laughs> yeah. Gaming His with face. Tony. Oh, honestly. Anyway, yeah. So he likes it. Cool. Right. Thank you, Dr. Jellyface. <laughs> I just want an opportunity to say that name again. (laughs) The Ubuntu Podcast needs you. Yes, you. If there's something you think we should talk about or someone we should talk to, tweet at UUPC or email podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. You can also talk to us on the telephone, Skype, Facebook and Google+. Find links to all these places on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org. And remember... If we don't hear from you, we might not have enough content. And that can only mean one thing. More quizzes. Please, no, not more quizzes. <laughs> uh, thank you for listening, everybody. Oh, oh, Alan's got something to say before I say goodbye. Oh, well, no, I was just thinking on the way here. We haven't done a quiz for a long time. and no, we, haven't, we haven't. And we haven't done a product review for a long time. And we haven't given away stuff for a long time. So if people want to send us stuff to review or want to give us stuff that we will give away to our listeners for a prize, yes. then let us know. Podcast at Ubuntu-UK to talk. Thank you very much for listening. The next live show will be on Wednesday, the 25th of June at half past eight. Goodbye. Half past eight in the... <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> PM. PM. Goodbye. Goodbye. Right. Thanks Bye. for listening. Bye. Bye. <laughs>